In this video, we're going to talk about fault tolerance in distributed training and how PyTorch can help make your training jobs robust. When scaling up your training job to multiple devices, you of course gain more performance. But you also increase the susceptibility of failure. A single process failure can throw your training job out of sync. PyTorch provides fault tolerance with Torch Run. And the idea is simple. Your training script takes snapshots of your training job at regular intervals. Then if a failure occurs, your job doesn't exit. Torch Run gracefully restarts all the processes, which load the latest snapshot and you continue training from there. This way, you only lose progress from the last saved snapshot instead of restarting from scratch. A snapshot includes the model state that you usually associate with a checkpoint, but a snapshot also includes any other attributes of the training job, like which epoch was last run, uh, the optimizer state, the learning rate scheduler, and so on. So I have my multi-GPU training script from the last video here. Now I'm going to update this to use Torch Run. Using Torch Run is really convenient because it handles the setting of environment variables under the hood automatically. What this means is we don't need to explicitly state the address and port of our main machine. We can take this out and let Torch Run handle it for us. All we need to let it know is the backend that we are running on. So previously we were passing the rank of the process based on the GPU it was running on. We don't need to do that anymore. Torchron provides an environment variable called local rank that we can access over here. Now onto the fault tolerance aspect of our training job. So to be fault tolerant, our training script needs to save more than just the models. I am in addition to the model state going to persist how many epochs have already been run. Before that, I'm going to add, I'm going to include an argument for the snapshot path. I already have save every which determines how often our model saves a checkpoint. We'll be updating this to save a snapshot instead. Since the parameter, the hyperparameter that I care about is how many epochs were run, I initialize this to zero, which is the default case. If a snapshot exists, I want our trainer class to be able to load that. Now I haven't defined this function yet, but I'll be doing that very soon. So in the load snapshot function, I'm going to be reading the model state and then loading that into self dot model. And once I do that, I want to wrap my DDP uh, around it just as usual. onto the load snapshot method. So I expect the snapshot to be a dictionary, a Python dictionary. So I'm just going to load this using torch.load. And once I do that, I'm going to initialize my model's weights. from a key of model state. I'll also initialize epochs run, which is the other hyperparameter that we are interested in. So I have my load snapshot method. I also need a save snapshot, which corresponds to this. 
I have a save checkpoint. I'm just going to update that. So here, like before, it's model.module.statedict. And that's because our model at this point in time would be a DDP model. So to actually access the weights of our underlying model, we need to call model.module. So since snapshot is going to be a dictionary, I start with an empty dictionary. And I save the model's state. The model state key. Similarly for epochs run. All right, so we have our load snapshot and save snapshot in place. Now, I also need to update my train function, train method to continue training rather than starting from scratch each time. And for that, I simply update the range to start from epochs run. In the default case, when there is no snapshot, epochs run is going to be zero and it's going to start from scratch. But if there is a snapshot, your training doesn't need to start from scratch every single time. It can just continue. All of this remains the same. My main function also remains the same. But since we don't really, we, we are not concerned with the rank and world size, we are letting Torchlan handle that for us. I'm going to take these off. I have included a new argument here, so snapshot path. Let's also pass that here. So, the torch run handles setting the environment variables. It also manages launching processes on the appropriate nodes and uh, devices. So what we don't need over here is the mp.spawn call. Now in this example, it's pretty trivial to have this on, but as we scale up horizontally to let's say 20, 30, even a hundred clusters, hundred machines in a cluster, um, this can get pretty tedious. So we let torch run handle this for us. So first we removed all explicit environment variables because we're letting torch run handle that for us. We are also using a variable that is set by torch run to determine what is the rank of the process or in this case, which GPU it is running on. We added logic to save other uh, hyperparameters of the training process like epochs run in this case, as well as logic to load and save the snapshots. And we updated our training loop, our training iterator, to start from the last epoch run instead of starting from zero each time. Finally, we deleted mp.spawn calls and replaced that with a simple function call to our main function. I'm going to save this file. So now I'm going to run this script called torch run and I pass a flag standalone, which lets torch run know that this is a single machine setup. We are running this on a single node. An n proc per node, number of processes per node, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is gonna be our local world size. And um, in this case, I have four GPUs on this machine, so I'm gonna pass four, but I could also just write GPU which lets Torchron know to use all available GPUs. So I'm going to run this script for 50 epochs, uh, saving a snapshot every 10 epochs. And uh, while it is running, I'm going to interrupt it to simulate a failure.
So our training job ran till 22 epochs and then failed. The last snapshot that was saved was at 20, at the 20th epoch. So let's try to continue our training now. Our training script to load the model that was saved at the 20th epoch and continue from there. So in this example, I simulated a failure by calling a keyboard interrupt on the training script and then restarting this process. Um, in a real situation, if, your, if one worker or if one process fails, Torchron is going to gracefully restart all of the workers and then continue from there.